most commonly asked questions is that what is the difference between acupuncture and dry needling? In theory, basically, we could categorize it into acupuncture, I would treat it for nerve and for pain. And the theory is going through the traditional Chinese theory, or I would say from anatomy. So I'm basically aiming for the nerves. When you stimulate the nerves, it will send the signal back to the spine, back to your brain, and your central nervous system could actually release hormones to help you deal with pain, such as endorphin and serotonin, etc. We usually leave the needle in for 10 to 15 minutes for that to release. Really. The big broad target we could talk about is muscle, or really, we should say the trigger points in the muscle. The history with dry needling is that Dr. Janet Travell, she was actually President JFK's physician. She wrote this volume of book called Myofascial Trigger Points in 1990s. She's identified these points in our body where the source and the symptom area are different. So for example, our upper fiber trapezius, there's a point here where most of us have from stress could give you headache. So people could say, I have headache here. They try to treat it locally here, but it did not relieve them. But if they go treat the source, it actually relieves your symptoms. So she used to inject saline, which is salt water into the trigger point and people will get relieved in here. But later on, she found out if she just stick the needle in before she even pushed to get the salt water in, people felt better. So she named it dry needling. So later on, we find that if we take an acupuncture needle, which is smaller, the tip is rounder, to stimulate the trigger point, we could get the same effect without using an injection needle. So the dry needling has been more prevalent in the last 10 to 15 years or so. In terms of diagnosis, we need to find out if your area of symptoms is the source or the victim, or we call it the referred site. So here I'm going to demonstrate. So for example, if I have pain uh, in my upper extremity, uh, even headaches, we have a point, acupuncture point here we call large intestine four, or in Chinese we call he gu xie. So here I will demonstrate doing an acupuncture in my large intestine four. So we landmark it, and there's actually a radial nerve there. I'm going to put the needle in and insert it gradually. There, I don't know if you saw my finger actually jumped. When we touch the nerve, you will feel a heaviness, kind of like a soreness, but not like a sharpness. And that sensation usually subsides after a few seconds or so. We will leave that in there for a period of time we could sometimes stimulate it mechanically to get more. So this is what I was talking about. You will produce some hormones from your central nervous system to help with pain. Now, as a physiotherapist, we think about nerves. So this particular nerve is what we call the radial nerve. You actually start from the neck and travel down to here. And this nerve actually supplies a number of muscles. So in that way, anatomically, we could actually stimulate those area. For a dry needling demonstration, for example, let's say if I have tennis elbow in here, usually we call that extensors of your wrist. If we palpate, we could find the trigger point. And once we find that point, which is taut or spastic, we could needle it. Once we locate it, we are going to insert and this time we're gonna go in slowly towards the muscle and I could feel for the tension. And as a patient, you might feel like a twitch or a cramp. So I see I'm moving my needle in and out gradually to find the little fiber. Once I obtain that twitch, which we call LTR, which is local twitch response, we bring it out. For the dry needling effect, once we got that twitch, which is a reflex, it means when we got to the trigger point, you will send the signal back to the spine. The spine will send back another inhibitory reflex. And the reflex will make the muscle twitch and cramp and then release. So the effect actually carries on for 24 to 48 hours. I will include more details about some of the effects of dry needling. So in summary, I will use acupuncture more for pain, especially if you have nerve symptoms. Acupuncture works very, very well. And for dry needling, we're looking for these trigger points, which are these top band in your body. So the two areas are actually completely separate. 
And with the acupuncture, we have the traditional Chinese theory, which involves the yin and yang and the meridians. And for dry needling, really, it should be anatomical and based on the trigger point theory by Dr. Jedet Travell.